Hello, and welcome to today's webcast brought to you by Lightwave. Today's event, The Benefits of Cloud Solutions for Your Next Cabling Project, is presented by myself, Larry Johnson, and Rob Gilberti from AFL. The event is also sponsored by the Light Brigade. Um, before we begin, we wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. And that if you have questions during the webcast, at the bottom of the screen you'll see a Q&A section. Just submit your question. Um, if it's something like an audio question or so, one of the staff will answer your questions. And that, on the other case, if it's a question regarding the content of the presentation, we'll address those at the close of the presentation itself and that, at the Q&A portion. Um, also, on-demand viewing, for your convenience, this presentation will be available on demand within 24 hours of this live event, and a reminder email message will be sent to all registrants with a link to the archive. It will also be accessible from, accessible from the LightWave homepage in the Event Resources section. And so now, I'd like to continue into the first slide, and you can, you can read about the Light Brigade. I think most of you know us and that which uh, we appreciate. So let's, uh, let's talk about the presentation itself. So the first part here is the documentation. And um, so the need for testing and documentation, what does it provide? What's the need for it? So my, my experience, and I'll give you some of these, I'm going to date myself some here too, um, is that you had to show proof of performance in that. So if, it, if you were running as a contractor role, you had to submit your uh, test reports. And what, um, from the user perspective, they're looking for proof of performance. But we're also going to be using documentation for future ads, moves, and changes. And for those that play in a maintenance or restoration role, we're definitely going to be able to recall information and overlay uh, rest, um, information as well in that. So for today's uh, technicians, reporting comes in many forms. So typical reports can include um, visual inspection, which, as many of you know, um, is becoming much more critical because the quality of a connector isn't only about attenuation, but it also affects the reflectance, which in turn affects the signal quality of the transmission system. Um, but we're also um, looking for the acceptance testing uh, using the OTDR to make sure that the fiber meets the specified values um, that engineering uh, is looking for. So we're looking for loss per kilometer, for example, at multiple wavelengths. And then our, um, we need to be able to document transmit powers, receive powers, and in some cases, such as, uh, say, a passive optical network using splitters, we may be looking at uh, incoming power measurements uh, before the splitter and, a, a, and then an output uh, measurement because when it comes to troubleshooting, we may be only looking at a small section of the network, not the entire network because it's a shared network. And, uh, so, you know, over the past, there's been lots of variations on how reporting could be done. And uh, some of these are, the, you know, of course, the hard copy print where the technician is uh, handwriting uh, the report in. And, and I've seen thousands of these reports, and I can tell you some of these guys out there have signatures like doctors. And that, so sometimes just interpreting them or reading them can be difficult. Um, but and getting them uh, reported in the right method as well. Also, if, for those that remember the old days, and here I'm dating myself, is you know when the first OTDRs came out, for example, we were using thermal paper. Those that paper wouldn't even you couldn't read it today with the age as it wears or if it got moisture is in a humid environment. So some of these reports are very um, flimsy to say the best as far as the quality of the information over a period of time. Um, subsequently, while the printers improved, the, the original data storage was very limited and to the point where it's uh, starting off with floppy disk and that, and today, you know, we, we never even see that type instrument. But think about this. What if your reports were done in those old formats, whether they're handwritten or on a floppy disk? Would you even be able to recover that information at all? So think forward, too, you know, using technology, but also <coughs> there's one to say, don't, don't just archive this information. Make it a living document as well. So fortunately today, you know, we have uh, external memory devices and USB storage. Um, we have a lot of reasons why we want to use these, but at the same time, the storage of this is uh, very important. So 
Um, other methods for the reporting uh, elements of the internal memory itself into an OTDR, um, and of course the limitations of the memory itself and the instrument itself. Uh, printing out uh, reports, uh, keeping the information correct and, and not having corruption occurring. And again, the human element uh, is, uh, is critical as well. Okay. Another one and uh, is for optical loss test sets, uh, the data is, um, you know, the, the formatting of the report and the loss values. We're also looking at reflection values as, as well. As, as, as well, and for those companies that, that uh, for example, contractors that are um, that require submission of the test reports and this and the correction, making sure everything meets the specification, they don't get paid till the reporting is completed as well. And so then there's there's two cases. There's the contractor with their test reports, but there's also the the end user. Uh, that would need to interpret those reports and see them in their format. So at this point, I'd like to uh, have, have Rob uh, Gilberti uh, join us. He is the Senior Product Marketing Manager from the AFL Noise Test and Inspection Division. And that, so with that, here's Rob. Great. Thank you, Larry. Hello, everyone, and I'd like to, uh, as Larry mentioned, Walk through some of the uh, some of the new things that are, that are coming up with uh, with cloud solutions in the industry. We'll talk a little bit today about some of today's test and measurement challenges. I'm certainly I won't have an exhaustive list. I'm sure there are many things that I didn't think of, but there are certainly uh, many that we can talk to today. Uh, we'll talk about what is a cloud solution and how it might apply to test and measurement solutions. What are some of the benefits of cloud solutions? And how does a cloud solution integrate with test and measurement tools uh, both today and uh, in the future? So what would the future of those tools for specifically cabling and testing applications look like? Okay, so as I said, some of the industry challenges, uh, certainly increased number of connections, you know, particularly fiber optic connections. Um, as, as many of you are aware, uh, the, the explosive growth in the data center market and the number of fibers and connections that are part of those data centers are, are continue to grow and, and really become uh, something that is, is almost out of control, uh, <clears throat> which drives the need for uh, additional tools and, and how do uh, contractors and end users today get more from the current tools that they have or how would they get more from investments that they make? Be able to manage multiple instruments from different vendors over different platforms. Uh, certainly tighter deadlines. You know, as, as, again, many of you are aware, customers want uh, connectivity and they want to be able to turn up their networks yesterday. So that drives the need, uh, or, or certainly has the need to drive up efficiency, both to lower costs and to meet those deadlines. Uh, you also have to uh, contend with a changing workforce and, and skills. Many of the uh, cabling contractors, uh, certainly for some of the larger, some of the larger carriers, uh, have a retiring workforce. So you have many new, new technicians entering the field that uh, don't have 30, 40 years experience in, in cabling or, or testing. So. The ability to uh, manage new equipment and to make it as easy as possible to adopt uh, some of these some of these new tools are, are certainly challenging. Uh, trying to get more data over existing connections, and you can, as you can see from uh, the photograph there, these racks today become more and more dense as uh, as users try to get uh, incredible amount of uh, uh, connections and information into. Uh, into more and more of a smaller space. And finally, standards obviously keep evolving uh, and trying to keep up with those standards uh, is, is enormously challenging as well. And as I said, this is really just a, a smattering of some of the challenges that are seen today. I'm sure many of you have, have your own challenges. <clears throat> In addition to those industry challenges, uh, there is also challenges within your test and measurement or your cabling installation workflow. 
So, for instance, technicians face challenges that inhibit inf efficiency every day. Uh, and whether you're doing Tier 1 or Tier 2 testing, whether it's an uh, MPO multi-fiber solution or, or not, whether it includes inspection or some other tools, whether it includes copper, CAT6, CAT8, um, all of these things are, are part of uh, a complex workflow that uh, drives uh, uh, complexity in the tools that they need and understanding what tools do I need and how should I configure them. Uh, what do I test? How do I know when something's accept acceptable? When do I know the job is finished? That, that, uh, that type of thing. Uh, coordination between the field and the office is difficult at best. Uh, providing direction, giving instructions, uh, understanding where your workforce is going, where they are, what they need to do. Uh, those, those are all challenges that you face every day. And finally, effective communication is difficult as, you know, obviously sometimes is impossible. And certainly as contractors grow or, or end users grow and have multiple locations, Throughout the country or throughout the throughout the world, communication only becomes more difficult. So, how might a, a cloud solution help all of this? And in the uh, in the graphic here, you can see the cloud in the center, uh, connecting to multiple different uh, types of um, types of workflow and types of tools. Uh, you have in, in the top left, you might have a manager or a project manager in an office working at a PC, working on uh, job requirements or engineering designs. You have your cabling equipment in the bottom left there, which includes patch panels and patch cords, uh, certainly integration with smart devices. There's integration with test tools, even splicers, other analytical tools as well as connecting to customers' existing uh, software platforms. They may have an internal OSS or they may have their own internal billing or, or building management system that they eventually would like to be able to tie some of their network and test data uh, to be able to, uh, to seamlessly integrate with, uh, with their current solution. All of these things, although may not be possible today, are certainly possible within the near future using a cloud solution. And they all carry enormous benefit as well as some challenges, but, but certainly, as Larry had alluded to, uh, to be able to have uh, the ability to recall data and, and analyze data at, a, at, at your fingertips is certainly something that we're all driving towards. So what are some of the main benefits? And, and whenever you talk about features and benefits, lower costs is always at the top of everyone's list. You can achieve lower costs with a cloud solution through improved efficiency. And, and we call it there a cross-functional uh, cross management. So you may have uh, people from different departments all uh, integrating through your cloud solution. It may be a project manager. It may be your technicians in the field. It can be an engineer. It can be, uh, as I had mentioned, building management or even your billing function or your technical support people who need to see uh, the, the, uh, some of the data that is collected for your network. By improving your efficiency and collecting all this data in one location, it now becomes something you can actually do something with. Uh, and it can eventually uh, lower your OpEx costs by not having to search for information that you, or, or not being able to even achieve information, or, or I'm sorry, to be able to um, get information that you may have uh, not been able to see before. You might have to send someone else to do some retesting because you can't find the data. Well, that certainly is uh, something that we want to avoid. Uh, sharing projects over distance at varying times with different equipment, trying to leverage that investment, and certainly uh, something that uh, as all companies are, are vying for. And finally, copper and fiber instruments to be integrated seamlessly, whether it's, as I said, CAT6 or CAT8, certification, OTDR, inspection, even splicing, even things that I'm sure we haven't even really thought about. Um, if you can integrate that all within the cloud, that makes your organization that much more efficient to be able to have the data at your fingertips. Another major benefit is certainly improved quality. So you can pre-engineer a project ahead of time that uh, allows uh, certainly a more efficient and uh, um, proper setup 
Uh, you can get it done right the first time before you uh, send the job out to your technicians so that when they get to the job site, they're not trying to figure out what to do while they're there. Um, perhaps you're sending someone out that uh, doesn't necessarily have the training that can understand what is needed um, and be able to have your or higher skilled or uh, better trained employees set up your, your, your projects and your jobs ahead of time allows you to uh, improve the quality of your overall of your overall system. You can align team members and requirements so everyone has the same requirements so that when technician number one goes to the job and he understands everything that needs to be done but technician two who's on the remote side, he may not either have the training or maybe didn't understand the requirements um, or just never received the requirements. By having everybody aligned certainly makes the entire operation more efficient. Tracking status and troubleshooting guidance can be provided. So as, a re as, as an example, if you have a technician who uh, performs some, um, some, some testing in the field, uh, believes that they're complete, everything looks good, comes back to the office only to find out that he had set up the tester incorrectly or had actually uh, misunderstood the requirements, gets back to, shows the, the data to his project manager who then says, uh, you have to go back out there because when you set up the tester, you set the pulse width of the OTDR incorrectly or you had the wrong standard or something of that nature. And it's another truck roll. That's another uh, whole day's worth of work to, uh, to go out and, and redo some testing. Well, if they can show the data, show the results, before they even leave the job site, get guidance of whether or not something passed or failed or was acceptable, that eliminates that whole separate truck roll and certainly lowers costs and improves quality. You can evaluate data for different standards. Data no longer is stagnant like a report, like a written report or, or, or uh, something that's on a, uh, on a floppy drive, as Larry had alluded to. It can be reanalyzed. It can be uh, used as proof of performance, but, but then can be used to look uh, whether or not it can be um, reevaluated to different standards. So you want to know if today something meets TIA 568, whether it meets a 10 gig standard, but tomorrow you want to see if it meets a 40 gig or 100 gig standard. Well, the data is, can be reanalyzed just through a push of a button by assigning a different standard or a different limit to the data and then uh, reevaluate it to see whether it passes the new requirements. That obviously um, saves on uh, having to uh, send someone out back to do some additional testing, but certainly improves the, uh, the overall quality of the, uh, of the job. And finally, you can address problems as they arise in real time. So if someone is having an issue in the field, they don't understand what to do, instead of having to come back to the office or trying to track someone down um, on, on the phone, and then I got to figure out how do I email the results or how do I fax the results, how do I get a USB stick to someone. If the data is in the cloud, the project manager or the supervisor can just log into the cloud and see the data in real time, provide some guidance, and uh, figure out what's going on and fix that issue. And then your technicians are free to continue on their way to do the job. Certainly efficiency, which kind of goes hand in hand with lower costs, but efficiency from the standpoint of uh, being able to provide a report uh, and, and an invoice before you leave the job site. So you can hand your customer the invoice before you even leave. And they, they can then say, well, this, is, this isn't what I want or this is, uh, I'm, I don't understand this data. So it eliminates the back and forth that you may have at the end of the job. Um, it also uh, certainly cuts down on the amount of time required to do that. It can provide access to data in real time that can, be that can be accessed from anywhere. You can provide that access to your customer who can also see that data in real time. It can improve workflow management so that the projects can also be managed, can be edited in real time. So when you get to the job site and you find that something is not what you thought it was when you did your initial walkthrough, or something has changed since the last time you saw, uh, saw the job site, you can edit your workflow in real time without having to come back to the job or um, come back to the office and, and uh, ch change some of the requirements. 
or having to kind of fiddle with it in the uh, in the field, you can call up your supervisor and say, well, they've added 12 additional fibers to test, or they've added a whole rack here, or they've reconfigured some things. You can go ahead and change those things in the cloud, and your workflow, your job requirements change uh, automatically, which really allows uh, workflow management um, to address issues anytime, anywhere, and by anybody. And uh, that really becomes the power of, of using your cloud solution. Enhanced compliance and security is certainly something that uh, is becoming more and more of an issue. You can instantly recall test, test data. It's always available. But you can manage your assets <clears throat> excuse me, to ensure equipment is calibrated, um, calibrated to, uh, within, um, within requirements. Make sure the right software versions and firmware versions are on your test equipment uh, with, the, with the latest. Um, without having to send equipment back to the office or even back to the manufacturer. Provides for secure documentation and reporting. You never lose data to, to theft um, since the data is in the cloud. Uh, it can be, uh, and that data can uh, go into the cloud. It can be um, synchronized with the cloud, as I said, in real time. So you can imagine uh, someone in the field uh, who has their test equipment that for some reason is damaged or is lost or left behind. Or as we've seen from a number of our of, of, of customers where from their test equipment has been stolen. Well, if you haven't had the chance to download your test data from the equipment, not only is the equipment stolen, but the data is stolen. And most times the data is far more valuable than the equipment. The equipment can be replaced, the equipment can be insured, the data cannot, and uh, if the data is gone, you now then have to send your technicians back to reacquire the data. If it's, uh, let's say it's a secure location, if it's a military location, or if it's fiber of the home, you need to get back into the the, uh, the customer's house, uh, that, that certainly becomes not just inconvenient, but sometimes uh, very, very difficult. And finally, you don't need to drive the equipment back to the office ever because the data now resides in the cloud. It can be synchronized in the cloud. I don't have to worry about USB sticks. I don't have to worry about connecting to a laptop. Um, all I need to do is just make sure that my test equipment has a good Wi-Fi or cell signal, and then I can get the, uh, the data uh, synchronized in the cloud. And some other benefits, um, cloud solutions can be uh, an open architecture. This allows for, uh, for a number of uh, opportunities to coordinate and integrate with, uh, with other systems. I had mentioned billing and, and building man management in the future. Uh, perhaps it can be tied to a, uh, a tech support or a trouble ticket type system where if something goes wrong, it can be, uh, it can be integrated with what was the original data, what, was, what were the uh, labeling, uh, what were the fiber IDs, copper IDs, uh, that type of information, all available to someone trying to troubleshoot a line. It's also scalable, so you can continue to add new capabilities. So once your reporting system, your data management system, it doesn't go out of date, uh, meaning that the next time that you log into your into your cloud solution, uh, it's at the latest it's at the latest software revision. Finally, uh, centralizing data enables easy access. Um, Collaboration across multiple organizations, whether you have multiple locations in your, in your, in your company, uh, you may be collaborating as an end user with a contractor, you may be collaborating with uh, another subcontractor or even a vendor of your test equipment um, or, or network equipment. The cloud solution allows you to be able to do all those types of things. So from a standpoint of uh, what how this compares to kind of uh, what's the, uh, kind of the general flow today. Um, you can see the top row is, is today generally most, uh, most workflow is, is serial in nature. You hand off your job to the technician, they go out to the field, they take results, they then have to drive back to the office to download, your, uh, to, to download their data. If there's an issue, they have to drive back to the office and so on. Well, with a, uh, with a, with a cloud solution, some of those things tend uh, now become uh, parallel in nature, meaning that I don't have to drive back and forth to the office. I don't have to wait to, uh, to download the data. I don't have to wait to uh, consult with someone to see the data. 
so that just drives uh, drives your efficiency. Um, certainly something that uh, we're driving towards. So as an example, and again, this is just one example. There are many, uh, many vendors of uh, cloud solutions, and they all generally work uh, in similar fashion. In this particular uh, example, just to give you an idea of uh, how a cloud solution might integrate with, with your equipment, uh, you'd log into your cloud platform. And you can create a project, and uh, including uh, what types of fibers do I test, what types of tests do I perform, what are my pass-fail limits, uh, what kind of, uh, who are the users, uh, who, um, what kind of uh, standards do I need to, to, to follow. All of that can be pre-engineered in the cloud ahead of time. I allocate my team members, and once I do that, I can then uh, synchronize a project or a job to my piece of test equipment. Now, in this case here, um, showing a smart device, um, which is one, uh, one potential possibility, but this could easily be a piece of test equipment that has, uh, that has cloud access. That uh, job now appears on uh, the field equipment. The, uh, the technician in the field selects their project to go out and capture some results and follow their, their prompts uh, through what the test equipment tells them to do. They synchronize automatically the, the data, which shows up in the cloud. And that, that then becomes available instantly. Another example might be with, uh, with an inspection probe. Similar type thing where we set up a, uh, a project in the field, we take our measurements, we uh, synchronize the data uh, with the cloud, and that data becomes instantly ac accessed in the cloud by anyone who has access to that, to that account. So this, what this does is, and all of this, by the way, is, uh, is the data is synchronized. It is within seconds. Uh, so this is not something that you have to worry about uh, downloading over a period of hours at the end of the shift or anything like that. Um, it is virtually within a matter of seconds in, or as we, we like to call it, real time. Uh, essentially, it's uh, real time for the technicians in the field that can uh, um, download this information. And finally, um, this is all about um, certainly trying to lower costs and, and um, certainly uh, Vendors are, are, have done great things with improving equipment, with improving test times. Uh, certainly, uh, customers have done a great job of, of uh, beating up vendors to uh, lower the prices that they pay. But there's only so much that you can do with, uh, with equipment. And ultimately, where you get the biggest bang uh, for the buck in lowering costs is by reducing your OPEX. So you can, by allowing uh, what, a cloud, what a cloud solution allows you to do, is to quickly set up your equipment either in the office, you, know, you can certainly still do it in the job site, but by allowing it in the office um, becomes more efficient. It's task driven so that uh, you're not telling your technician to go out to the field and figure out what to do. You know, you're giving them a very quick, um, very easily set up um, set of tasks that they can then follow. Um, seamless integration today with the existing infrastructure. You can tie results together and ultimately get to uh, where you need to be, which is a report that you can provide to your customer that shows proof of performance um, and shows proof of, uh, of um, the fact that you meet all the requirements and standards required and, uh, and, and ultimately provide an invoice to your customer so the contractor can get paid. And the, uh, the, this, these requirements and these reports then become uh, consistent across whatever platform you're using um, and that's within your company as well as uh, as well as your customers' organization. So that allows um, certainly something um, it certainly allows your customer to get their their what they need, and allows the uh, the contractor to do what they need uh, very quickly uh, in in the most efficient time area. Um, I believe that's my last slide. So I'm going to turn this back over to uh, to Larry. Hey, well, thanks, Rob. Um, Okay, so there's some uh, questions here, and um, so let me address those. So we'll both be sharing the, uh, the yep. phone here. So um, about the updates themselves. Um, so when when it's recorded up to the cloud, now somebody comes in and they make a correction to this. Um, is how easy is the reporting structure? Is it is it uh, are there 
Yes, yeah, so, so the, the data, once it's uh, synchronized to the cloud, that's, uh, that, that's in real time. So the data becomes instantly available. Um, any previously run report uh, would, would no longer have, um, when I say a previously run report, if you were to run a PDF or an Excel spreadsheet or something like that, you can certainly download that from any data that you collect in the cloud. Um, if you were to update the data, then you would have to rerun a report, a PDF file or an Excel, um, which would have all the uh, all any new data that had been synchronized. So it's uh, as often as you want to run the report, you can get updated uh, updated results. And running a report is a matter of um, selecting to uh, to download that PDF or download that Excel file, um, and it's a matter of you know a few seconds or whatever it takes to uh, to download uh, to download your report. So with each of the records when it's updated, so we know when it occurred, and we also know who who made the changes. Yes. So, so generally, uh, um, all of the data as it is synchronized is time stamped, um, and it is also um, stamped with um, the operator and the uh, piece of equipment, so the serial number of the equipment that was used to do the actual testing. And then, uh, depending on which report template you want to use, and you know, one of the nice things about, again about the the cloud solution is um, there are a number of different templates that you can you can uh, you can pick from. Uh, there's uh, the a possibility of being able to create your own templates, so you can certainly customize however you like. And if you want to see what in, uh, what equipment was used, uh, when it was done, uh, what the calibration date of that equipment was, um, what the latest software was, all that can be included in a report. Um, if all you want to see is the lost data, then that's all you have to that's all you have to download as well. So it's certainly up to the and okay, Alan, um, a, a question on OTDRs. You mentioned that you can upgrade because one of the common problems with OTDR testing, acceptance testing, is uh, people are testing using the index of refraction which comes with the cable, which is actually the fibers index of refraction. Not the, the, it doesn't match sheath length because of um, the, the extra fiber you know, um, in the buffer tubes, the lay of the buffer tubes, the inner and outer row of the buffer tubes. So someone sends in a report, we know that it's incorrect because of the index refraction. So at this point, can you go over what they would be doing? So, so uh, if you were to, then uh, I think the example that I had used was uh, was, the, was the pulse width, something that we right. see a lot of as well. Um, so certainly, if uh, your technicians at the job site and they've selected the wrong pulse width, or and perhaps they've entered in the wrong fiber type or, or index of refraction, and uh, the data as your uh, as it is synchronized um, appears incorrect to the project manager. He can instruct his technician in the field, oh, you need to choose a different index of refraction. It should have been this number instead of uh, what you used. Uh, or instead, try it with a small, uh, or the, um, narrower pulse width because we want to see more, uh, more events in closer proximity to each other. Um, those things can be uh, guided to the technician in the field. They then um, change the, change the uh, parameters, uh, run a retest, and then that data can then be uh, synchronized to the cloud. The, the new data can then be synchronized to the cloud um, so that the project manager can then see if all right, now I, I do have what I, I needed. It looks like the results are, are, are appropriate. Yeah, and, and from a user perspective, this is valuable because now all of a sudden you have accuracy, especially on index refraction, on length, because it's not going to be the fiber length. It's going to be the sheath length sure. from the sequentials. Exactly. And, and each type of cable in different areas, they can actually, if there's a cut or restoration, they can dial in the, the right number and have yep. access to exactly. it. So we have a question, another one. <clears throat> Are there industry efforts to standardize the API to the test and measurement equipments for cloud-based solutions? That's a good question. Uh, there are there are some um, there are some discussions uh, ongoing. I'm not of any I'm not aware of any formal um, efforts uh, to currently standardize, um, but I would expect that that will uh, will certainly be something that is happening in the near future um, as the uh, Number of cloud solutions prolif proliferate in the industry. Um, the ability to uh, to set a standard so that we can all talk to each other and certainly talk to other industry equipment um, will certainly be beneficial. Okay, and and I uh, I'm just interjecting here. Uh, Telcordia historically is uh, is driven uh, the manufacturing side and to the user side. So I, I hope we see something from that side, but. Um, uh, we'll see. Now, 
Another is, I'm going to go back and talk about a, a personal experience I had years ago. And one of them was a, a 12,000 termination project, um, a huge uh, data center type company and all this. And the amount of record keeping was just atrocious. And, you know, for people to understand how many, if you had 12,000 terminations, it's how many optical loss tested, two wavelengths, bidirectionally, a lot of documentation. It was just extraordinary. Now, to make it even worse, the, another project was 56,000 terminations, bidirectional, dual wavelength, three tests for each, plus visual inspection. Now, in one of uh, the slides that I saw, you, you it, it looked like you can integrate the visual picture with the, the yes. test report. Yes, so uh, it certainly um, with the ability to integrate uh, different uh, test tools uh, within the cloud allows the user to essentially get a, uh, to eventually get a, uh, a consolidated report, which would include uh, loss test values and length, mm -hmm. so that's you know some some uh, numbers, if you will, at two different wavelengths. Um, OTDR traces um, uh, and, and visual uh, kind of network map of uh, the different events, um, as well as inspection images, uh, all consolidated within one report. Um, which is very powerful for the end user because now they don't need to look at, well, I have a report for inspection, I have a report for the OTDR, and I have a report for my certification loss data. Um, and I've got to make sure that I can put those three things together to really understand, do I, do I have uh, what I need here uh, for, my, for each individual fiber? Does it really meet my requirements? Whereas with uh, being able to integrate all these into the cloud into one report, your, your end user can then see they've got a single page for a single fiber that shows all this data and can have a big check mark at the top or a big X at the mark, whether it passes or fails. Um, and, uh, and there's nothing to prevent uh, something in the future um, if you want to know, um, if you want to integrate splicing data from your splicer, if you want to, in your project, you also have Category 6 and Category 8 cables to be able to integrate all your copper data um, into, uh, into a single project report. That can certainly be uh, all done through the cloud. Okay. Uh, another question is, um, can, can it be identified easily to, to, to find test re tests that are out of spec? So, in other words, you don't have to look at the entire report. You just look at what's out of spec. Sure. Sure. Yeah, generally, um, what, what, how, uh, how these work is uh, when a, a result is synchronized, um, just much like you would see on your, on your piece of test equipment if something um, doesn't meet uh, the requirements. It might be in red or it might have an X or, or something of that nature. Um, in the cloud, it would work the same way. You can look at a list of all your uh, results that have been uh, synchronized or uploaded, and you can see all the check marks and, and um, Xs. You can see what passes and fails. And, uh, and also, in many of the, um, and I know in several of the cloud solutions that you'll see uh, kind of a, what might be called a, a progress bar or a, or a monitor um, in which it gives you kind of a, a, a uh, sort of a, a meter that tells you, uh, I've tested 100 fibers, and uh, 12 of them have failed and 88 of them passed. So I might see a big part of that uh, meter uh, is green, but there's a small part that's red, and, uh, and that allows me to then see, all right, I've got however many fibers it is that I have to worry about. That's my punch list of things that I now, now need to correct, I now need to, to fix. <clears throat> That's great because one of the things in my experience too is from the time, uh, from testing the turn up, the, the actual, if you ran a Gantt chart and what occurs and when, um, turn up, the testing's occurring. Any, any delays ahead of the actual testing push it up against turn up. And, that, and so the, the speed required, and this has a lot for sure. the level of the equipment in the industry in general, but also the reporting structure <coughs> and the lack, um, the, you know, the, the less mistakes the better. So it is beneficial for everyone, and, and that's uh, it's great to, to, to see. And all. Um, what would be the typical problems? Are there, is it human error, equipment error, you know? Well, certainly, uh, you know, if, if you're testing, uh, so there's, there's nothing that can be done about uh, testing the wrong fiber, for instance, right? You know, this is, we can tell uh, technicians what to test, how to test it, um, but if they plug into the wrong fiber, there's, there's no way we can prevent that. Um, you know, cloud solutions do require um, that you do have some sort of uh, internet access at some point. Now, 
Uh, it doesn't require that um, people have internet access while they're doing the testing. Um, generally, the test equipment, or if you're using a smart device with your test equipment, um, data will continue to be stored uh, in the internal memory of the device uh, until the next time you get uh, good internet access. Obviously, if you're in a, in, a, in, a, in a greenfield situation or you're in a cellar somewhere where there's just not good uh, access, um, you, we, have to we have to work around the fact that um, you won't always have good Wi-Fi access. But, um, but eventually, you'll need to have Wi-Fi access. So if you, if you, never, uh, if you never upload or, or connect to, to Wi-Fi, then the, you know, the data will certainly still be in your equipment, but you still have to get that to, uh, to the cloud at some point. Um, so you know, there's, uh, we can certainly try to make this as easy as possible. The, the, the cloud solutions will um, allow people to, to do a lot more. Um, it can be a little scary for some people as well, you know, who think that, um, you know, we've had, uh, just personally, we've had a number of customers say to us, oh, we'll never use a cloud solution. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, uh, you don't necessarily know what it can do yet. And, and so it sounds a little scary, but um, the uh, once once they start to use it, they start, they see that uh, it's got so many benefits that, all right, maybe uh, we do need to learn a little bit how this uh, how this works. And this next question, I think I don't believe it's as much a cloud question as as, as a, an equipment question, but with more complex systems, and that to where we're at, say a, a fiber to the home network where we have one OLT to 32 ONTs. With that, that report is unique versus sure. a point to point test. Sure. So in the equipment side, is it is it do you have a menu that selects a type of test? Exactly. So in uh, in the solution, you can uh, you can create uh, a setup or, or um, kind of a, a, a list of requirements for the equipment that tells it exactly what type of network that you're testing, um, whether it is point to point or it's a pollen solution, um, whether you're doing bidirectional, or unidirectional, or multiple wavelengths. All those kind of parameters are configurable uh, generally. Um, and certainly, as I said, you know, some of these things, what, what could be possible in the future as well as, as some of these data centers become more and more complex, um, you can test the whole rack potentially all at once, right? Um, now, uh, now, eventually that'll, uh, that'll have to be, uh, it becomes very complex to manage from, from an equipment standpoint, but, um, but there's nothing to prevent, uh, prevent that from happening. Um, but is, is for today, um, you know, all those things can be, can, uh, like I said, point to point or pawn can be chosen today, and, uh, and well, depending on how you set it up, the uh, the, the um, equipment will then guide you through what to do to test. Good. On uh, st sticking on pawns, because there's three generations of pawns: the legacy pawns, which are pretty straightforward, G pawn, B pawn, E pawn. Uh, next generation, though, changes wavelengths <coughs> upstream and downstream, and the the, the third generation. Uh, on that, when we go to WD and PON, now we're incorporating not only fiber management, but we're now we're incorporating wavelength management mm -hmm. as well. So in one case, we have these test reports that were originally performed on a legacy PON, then we go to a 10G PON, then we go to a WD and PON. So the flexibility is there, so what you're saying. Absolutely. Okay. Yep, absolutely. And so, and, and again, it's a matter of... Uh, of configuring your uh, your uh, your workflow and your setup, depending on what you want to do, whether it's uh, 1490 nanometers, you know, if it's 1650 nanometers, if it's bidirectional, unidirectional, if it's a WEM system, and there's a whole other uh, uh, piece of equipment that you then need to integrate with uh, to test multiple wavelengths. Um, all those can be accommodated with the cloud. Great, great. Um, can we? Uh, our email addresses are on the Q and A sheet. Um, it's uh, Larry at Light Brigade and Rob dot at AFLGlobal dot com. Uh, if you want to reach out to either of us with uh, any specific questions, be glad to get back to you. Um, on the other case, we appreciate you taking time out today uh, to to listen in on us. And uh, as I may have mentioned before, that. Uh, uh, the presentation will be archived within 24 hours and can be accessed from the LightWave homepage. <clears throat>
again on the event resources selection area. And there's also going to be a reminder email sent uh, to all the registrants complete with a direct link to the archive. And on behalf of the Light Brigade, we'd like to thank Lightwave, Pinwell Corporation, and AFL in participating. So thank you very much. We look forward to uh, having you attend future presentations.